There are plenty of pundits who say Donald Trump doesn't stand a chance against Hillary Clinton in the general election. There, there are those, pundits or not, who warn of the opposite. Quote, I know they, Trump campaign, are planning to focus on Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. That's how, we can, how he can win the election and get those upper kind of Midwestern type states, he can pull it off. That from Bernie Sanders supporter, Michael Moore. And Michael Moore joins me now. How are you, Michael? It's good to see you again. Good, good. Am I now a pundit? <laughs> Just, uh, I made a prediction. You're a filmmaker, <laughs> uh, writer, mm. social activist, mm -hmm. visionary. Good. No, I... Okay. Uh, we can stop there. What, let's, Thank you. I guess let's start with this. Yeah. I remember Downsize This, I think, was the book. I remember reading that book. Um, the last chapter of Downsize This, if I'm not mistaken, is an interview with the Michigan militia, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And in it, it basically says, look, these should be our people. Okay, these, these, we, we, we should find a way, those of us on the left, right, that's the perspective you're writing from, to talk to the, the, the fears and hopes that these folks have about a getting left behind. And it occurs there's something a little bit like that happening in the, this political moment as well. Yeah, I think that, I think that Trump um, uh, is, uh, look, I said publicly last August that I thought he would be the Republican nominee and, and that was laughed at. I don't think, we should, I think people are, no longer laughing no, no. at the possibility of what could happen. I mean, people say to me all the time, you know, like, how bad could it be, really? I mean, if, if, if Trump gets in, and I'm like, well, what do you mean by how? <laughs> what's the scale of how bad? Like, 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 like uh, how bad, uh, like Frank Underwood pushing Zoe in front of the, the <laughs> Metro train bad, or, or Baxter putting the bar of soap by Lady Grantham's bathtub so she'd slip and lose the baby bad? I mean, I don't know how bad, but I would say pretty bad. But if people, if I think that, and I, and I was listening to Bill Maher the other night say this too, I think it's very important that we take this seriously, yep. that our side of the political fence uh, oftentimes does not come out to vote. And so therefore, uh, you know, the other side, they're very good at getting up in the morning and going into votes. So I think that we've, I think that that should be a real concern. I, but I've said, and I said this on your show before, that, and the polls have proven this to be true, that actually if Bernie Sanders was the candidate, he's a safer choice to beat Trump than, than Hillary. Now, they're both, they both can beat him. He, but but me, I, think that, I think his strategy will be to focus on the part of the country I'm from because he says things like if Ford takes that factory out of Detroit and builds right. it in Mexico. I will literally just tell them no. They yeah. can't do it. <laughs> I shall tell them no. Yeah, I mean, that is, that Bring is the it argument. back. No. And then he you cannot leave. breaks into song. Or... Yeah, this, so the, I, I've seen this argument increasingly from, from Sanders folks. Um, uh, and I should say that the, in aggregate polling, it is based on data. And that data is the aggregate polling averages that show the margins of Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. But it's also based on a fictional election that hasn't happened yet, right? Right. I mean, Oh yeah, it, we're it, six months away. Right. I mean, it just it does seem to me that people are putting the folks that are supporting Sanders. It, let's just be clear. There's substantive reasons that people mostly are supporting Sanders. I don't think most people are supporting him because they think he's the most likely to beat Trump. I think they no, like they what, are voting from their conscience. Exactly. They're voting yes. from their conscience and their yes. beliefs, and they say he says things I agree with. We have yes. To, That's um, why I voted for him. But they have made the argument about this, and it that seems to me to underestimate the impact of what it would be for Bernie Sanders to be in the crosshairs of that. Well, I think what Bernie, what he said the other night was true <clears throat> when he said that Hillary, it's not, Bernie isn't going to deliver these votes for Hillary. Hillary is going to have to reach out and convince right. Sanders voters why they should be for it, and not just as an anti-Trump vote. Right, so then what do you make of this this moment, which I, I think is really interesting. I think this election has been fascinating on the Democratic side, although so much attention has been paid to the Republicans. I mean, you've got a situation where the math, you know, gets harder and harder for, for Sanders as he goes on, and it remains the case that people are coming out to vote for Bernie Sanders mm. late and late and late into the primary. Mm -hmm. There has been no one saying, you know what, let's get on with this, let's do it. He's probably going to win West Virginia tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, what he's, he's ahead. What does that polls. mean, though, about to yeah. you, about the current, this moment for what yeah. is the center-left coalition in America? What does mm -hmm. that mean to you? What, do you, what does well, that say I, to you? Uh, first of all, I feel really good about the fact that there's nine primaries left. He's ahead in the polls in six right. of those nine right. primaries. That's pretty damn good. He's 118, plus Democrats abroad. That's 25 primaries right. but is for that a guy number? who's oh, a Democratic sure. socialist. Totally. But Come ultimately, on. ultimately where, where things look like, where they are right now and where they look like they will end up, yeah. is that he is the choice of about 45% Democrats. I think, no, yes, yes, I mean, right now. And that's a, that's a big great, number. That is, is a very big number. It is not the huge. majority. It's the big number. Right. But, but there's, this is such a crazy election year. It's six, the election is six months from yesterday, right? So we've got six more months of this craziness. We can't even, as you and I sit here tonight, imagine 
all the craziness that's going to take place between now and then. That's true. And anything can happen between now and the convention. With, with Trump, with Hillary, with Bernie, whatever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and presume anything right now other than that I'm the presumptive guest on your show at this moment. Okay, but other the, than that. But, but then, so I'm not asking you to make predictions. What I'm, what I'm asking you to say is sometimes, here, here, let me tell you where I am. I have them of two minds, right? At one yeah. level, I feel like I see this sort of like- I can help you with This, this. roiling frustration and anger in America, this, this alienation that is largely, I think, born of the fact that most workers have not seen the gains of this economy in a long time, and it's particularly true of this recovery, yes. which in certain comparative ways has been miraculous, and in other ways has been a big disappointment for folks. Most would be more than 90%. That, that is the, the weird paradox of this recovery. That's right. At the same time, I also sometimes wonder if we get suckered into paying the most attention, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and there's a lot of Americans, President Obama's approval ratings all time high, 55% of Democrats have voted for Hillary Clinton who was running to sort of embrace that legacy, that the press is missing the folks who feel like actually things are going in a good direction. Mm. Uh, I don't think that's true. In, in fact, I think, you see, here's the problem, is that the depression in, that takes place from people who have suffered yeah. through this time, through these last really couple of decades, it's harder and harder for them to say, why bother? Why get up and go and vote? Right. Because these are just politicians. Young people don't like phony. They don't like fake. And they have a good sniffer for BS. And, and this is going to be Hillary's problem, to get young people out to vote, because they sense something's not real here. And, and, and for people in my generation... I think that's overdetermined, let me just say. But over, What does that mean, overdetermined? I mean that I think that that is, pe people's sense of her authenticity or not is, cannot be divorced from the way in which she's been portrayed for decades. Well, well she's been awfully abused right. for decades. Right. But <clears throat> I think that there is a real problem here. Yeah. It shouldn't be ignored. And um, and I think well, let's see what Rachel has to say about this. <laughs> Rachel, nice throw, Michael. Are you Moore. here? Documentary filmmaker Michael Moore, uh, whose latest film, Where to Invade Next, uh, is available on Blu-ray tomorrow. A fascinating conceit and DVD, and fascinatingly executed. <laughs> thanks so much for your time. Hey, thanks for having me. That is an all-in okay. for this evening, Rachel Maddow.